Like many people, Paul and Tracy Fitzpatrick feel trapped in the daily grind of their working lives. Tracy's been doing a gruelling factory job for the last nine years. It's wearing her down. And husband Paul barely sees her between shifts. However, he has a plan to take Tracy and the family off to a new, healthier life in the country. With 12 acres of land and horses in the heart of Cambridgeshire. But the only way they can afford it is to create their dream family home out of this, a disused Apple storage building. But a catalog of costly delays means that the dream is going to come at a hefty price. Every single credit card has been used and put right up to the limit. Life seems pretty good for Paul and Tracy. They have three daughters and live in a comfortable home in the suburbs of Hertfordshire. Tracy keeps two horses and Paul works in a shed at the bottom of his garden. But in fact, life is far from idyllic, especially for Tracy. To keep up their lifestyle, she's been working monotonous, grinding 12 hour night shifts in a car factory. And she and Paul hardly ever see each other. So they've decided to move to the country and make a massive life change. For the past nine years, Tracy's been working here to help make ends meet. So Tracy, you've just finished work. How was it? Tiring. I started at half two this morning. Half two? Yeah, so seven days a week, 12 hours a day, and six or eight at the weekend. I literally walk around like a zombie. I've got three girls and I've missed out on their first teeth, their first walk. It's depressing, really. Tell me about what your new life's going to be about. What's the dream for you? Dream is just to spend more time with the family and the kids and Paul and the horses, just not having to get up at a certain time. The Fitzpatricks will be leaving their Hertfordshire home, where husband Paul currently makes luxury photo albums for sale in London boutiques. For him, the move to Cambridgeshire is also about bringing the family together. So how's life going to change for you? I, I want to become part of a community, you know, like a rural community. And that, um, I'm going to spend a lot more quality time with my wife, my family. Paul has found the perfect plot in the Cambridgeshire Fens, which will give them everything they ever wanted. 12 acres of land, which is currently an apple orchard, complete with a collection of original storage buildings. For all this, they've paid just £170,000. Paul? Where are you? You in there, mate? Hey. How are you? <laughs> Come in. Hiding away there. Are you well? Yeah, it's good. All Look good. A bit windy. So, is this going to be part of your new house? Well, no, this, this is the part that's got to be uh, actually demolished. Uh, this was the packing part of the... because this was a factory working place. Oh, because you've got huge, like, fridge doors and everything. Yeah, so we bought a cold storage barn. It's an original, solid 1940s building in it, but it's, um, it's in surprisingly good, good shape. But if you're demolishing all of this, is this what's going to form part of your house, then? Yeah, there's enough room. When all the ceiling comes out, yeah. there's an upstairs as well. This will be a huge transformation. Paul and Tracy are essentially converting a large apple fridge into a four bedroom family home. Upstairs will be a huge master bedroom and guest bedroom, both with ensuite bathrooms. On the ground floor will be two bedrooms, a study, dining room, kitchen, a huge lounge and a sunny family room overlooking their 12 acres. And 100 metres to the right of the house, they're building a big stable block and paddocks for Tracy's horses. It's a massive challenge, 
and Paul's only had a small extension built before and he'll be project managing the whole job. This apple fridge is an agricultural building and was never intended to be lived in. Before work can start, the whole building will be stripped right back to just four walls. So with no experience, Paul's effectively building a whole new house from scratch. They've bought this old property and it sounds to me like it needs a lot of work doing to it. Are you daunted by that? It doesn't daunt me. It's uh, as long as I can find the right tradesmen, the right people, you know, good quality builders and that. And at the end of the day, I know that we'll be able to create something that uh, we'll be happy to live in for many years. During the build, Paul will be living in a caravan on site because they're selling their old house to fund this project. Tracy and the kids will be scattered between friends and family back down in Hertfordshire. The sale of their house has left them with a budget of £150,000 to build both the house and the stables. Are you convinced that will do the job that you want to create? I think I can come in underneath that quite comfortably. We've seen the programmes, we've seen how people can create a beautiful home from a, an old barn and we just thought to ourselves, well, we can do that. It's September and demolition begins and Paul seems very confident about taking on this massive project. And to put himself under even more pressure, he wants to finish the whole thing in just three months so the family can get back together for Christmas. But a project on this scale is not to be underestimated. I'm not sure Paul realises the full extent of what he's taken on. Paul and Tracy Fitzpatrick have set in motion their ambitious plan to set up a new life in the Cambridgeshire Fens. They're looking for a more relaxed lifestyle where they can spend quality time as a family, away from Tracy's exhausting factory job. But to achieve their dream, Paul has taken on project managing a huge challenge, turning this old apple fridge into a family home and building a brand new stable yard for Tracy's horses. With £150,000 to spend and no previous experience, Paul is hoping to get his family in by Christmas, just three months away. Though it's OK in the caravan, I don't want to be in there forever. So we've got to get this finished as quick as possible. Down in Hertfordshire, Tracy is packing up 12 years' worth of family life and memories. I'll, dr I'll drive the guy work from work 24 hours straight. Then do this. <laughs> She's doing it herself with help from family and friends. We didn't get a um, removal pay point because obviously we want to save money and have a bit more money to spend on the barn. But then it's worked out harder than what we thought it would be. They're not only leaving their home of 12 years, until their new house is finished, the family are going to be living apart for the first time ever, with Tracy and the children bunking down with family two hours away from Paul. They've got to go. Can you go and put on? Oh. Come on, Chelsea. We're going. Come on. Right, everything's out of here. It's a tough time for the Fitzpatricks, and Paul's determined to get the build finished and the family back together in the shortest time possible. Things move on steadily in October. The large packing shed has been pulled down. The roof of the apple fridge has been taken down as well. So that, is that going to just lift right out? No. It just lift right out. Paul has brought builder Barry up from Hertfordshire to get things going. I'm going to, we'll have to just get the boards up there and we we'll have to cut it off. 
Within two days, the roof has been completely ripped off. Away from the barn, the old orchard is also undergoing a major transformation. Paul and Tracy have 12 acres of land with their property, with over 300 mature apple trees on it. Now, all of these are being chopped down to make way for Tracy's horses. It's a sad but necessary sacrifice to make to realise their dream. As newcomers to Upwell, Paul and Tracy feel bad about cutting down a 100-year-old orchard. But too many apples will give the horses colic, so the trees have got to go. We kept saying all the locals, please help yourself, and they've been throwing up in the droves, filling their boots up. They're the best apples around, apparently. It is a shame. We was told some places you'd never be allowed to rip out, rip out an orchard. And yeah, I, yeah you know, I, I didn't like the idea of doing it, but I had no option. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's the way of the world. Tracy's two horses play a large part in her plans for the future. And down in Hertfordshire, every day after a 12-hour shift, she drives half an hour to feed them. I mean, I enjoy riding them, but um, I get more pleasure out of looking after them. In the summer, I used to come up here and just sit in the field and just watch them, and then they'd come over and nuzzle you and push you and all that. It's just, it's just relaxing. It's like they... Oh. I can't explain, it's like, they're it's like a dog, really. Horses are just big dogs. The horses are being kept on rented pasture land until the new stables are built. But with winter approaching, Tracy is keen to move them into shelter as soon as possible. You can't really groom them when they're out in the field. And I can't really look after them there. On site, the major demolition work continues. The huge fridge doors are being ripped off. The beautiful 19th century barns are being demolished to make way for a courtyard garden. And the internal walls of the apple fridge are being knocked down with gusto. Only come down a bit. That's, our, that's the installation of stone on the wall. By early November, the apple fridge has been completely gutted and is ready for the next phase of construction, which we'll be putting on the roof trusses. I, I would have said that when we're, we're on target, we're flying, and um, I'm looking to get it really um, complete as soon as possible. You know, I don't want it dragging over the next journey because I, I, want, it, I want it finished. And at the moment. Everything's been pretty good. But with the new roof due to arrive in 10 days' time, Paul's builder Barry discovers a problem. The walls of the old apple fridge are not straight. We checked the levels of the wall and found out that uh, on the far side, it was out nearly a foot. So, so it's sort of, if the building was lengthways like that, it's sort of like that. Yeah. And, and then like that, that, that way as well. That way, yeah. <laughs> it's not subsidence. It was actually built like it. Why would they have done that? They, they just didn't bother checking the levels in it. It was only an agricultural building, wasn't it? So, so they just threw it up. Quickly. Just threw it up and built a roof to fit. It's four weeks into the build, and Paul is facing his first setback. All the walls have to be made level before the new roof arrives. And on top of this, Paul is under pressure to get started on the stable foundations, as Tracy wants to bring the horses up in just two weeks' time. He doesn't want to fall behind schedule, and he doesn't want to let Tracy down. For an inexperienced project manager, Paul makes a brave decision to do both at the same time. He decides more manpower will solve his problems, so he digs deep into his pockets and hires a team of local builders. I've got three labourers, I've got general builder, 
two chippies, another builder. Everyone's on a, a fair amount of money a day. You know, and you add that up at the end of the week, my wage bill's been quite high. Meanwhile, a hundred metres away, Paul and Barry get to work on the foundations for the stables. It's not a small job. The hardcore goes in first, followed by 40 tonnes of concrete to cover 50 cubic metres. From a project management point of view, getting these foundations down isn't a top priority. But right now, it is for Paul. This is for Tracy. Uh, it means that the stables can come in next week and um, the horses can come up. Uh, her whole life's going to change from virtual misery from day to day to complete happiness. And it, it, this is partly why we did all this. She, she really does deserve this. She's been the, uh, she really worked and pushed. And if it wasn't for her, we would have never had half of what we got. I just think a happy wife would give me a happy home. So. I, I win as well. The finishing touch to the foundations is putting in 70 metres of reinforcing steel mesh. Get your boot out then! <laughs> At the apple fridge, the team of builders have finished levelling the walls and are fixing the hangers, in time for the arrival of the roof and new first floor. Despite the expense, Paul is pleased to see his house back on track. Until he gets an unwelcome phone call. Due to a mix-up with the order, delivery of the roof That's trusses right. is going to be delayed by two weeks. Bye bye. After spending more on extra labour to keep to schedule, all Paul is now left with is a shell gathering dust. And back at the stables, there's more bad news. The low-lying Cambridge fens are notorious for flooding. The water table is only three feet below ground level. Unaware of this, Paul has made a mistake and the concrete floor is not high enough. He now needs to raise the level considerably and this will take a whopping 140 tonnes of extra concrete. That means a lot more time and a lot more money. And it means that Paul's attitude towards the stables is changing. So it's an awful lot of trouble for some horses. This has been the bane. I want this gone. I think this has nearly given me an ulcer. <laughs> the foundations still aren't finished by the weekend, when, as usual, Tracy comes up to stay with Paul. Ah, it's, gonna... it's all coming out the bottom. But despite the frustrations and the mounting costs, Tracy's still pressing to get her stables up and ready as soon as possible. So how's everything going? Very slowly at the moment, um, not going as fast as I wanted it to go. Obviously the horses are supposed to be up tomorrow, but they're not going to be going up in that. <laughs> but do you think yeah. it's going to be this side of Christmas or not? Oh yeah, it'll definitely be this side of Christmas. Probably end up being about the week before Christmas right. that I'll bring them up. And how much are these stables costing you? First of all, we thought the groundwork was going to cost us about four or five grand. It's probably costing us more like eight or nine grand. Ouch. Yeah. And then the stables, which is got, we've got for a really good deal. It's cost us about 12 grand for the stables, which is really good for the amount we've got. There may have been a bustle of activity at the stable block, but absolutely nothing's been happening on the new house. Much to Paul's frustration. Horses are an expensive hobby. The money's escalating, it's coming out of control, so in the end I was getting I was getting very wound up with this. I wanted, wanted everything to be on the house and it was all over here. And what about Paul? I mean, he's, he's been brilliant. I mean, not many blokes with upsticks come away from all their mates and do this. 
He says when he dies, he's coming back as an horse. But... <laughs> <laughs> By the end of November, the stable foundations are finally finished. Paul can now wash his hands of them and let the contractors take over. That means now we can concentrate purely on where we're going to be living and not where the horses are going to be living. But with the trusses delayed and problems with the foundations, the builder's now a month behind schedule. There's no way these four walls will be a finished house by Christmas. But it's not all doom and gloom. Tracy's stables have arrived and are being put up by the contractors. This is the moment she's been waiting for. All those years of hard work in the factory are finally paying off. I think they're stunning. <laughs> I was walking around, I can't figure out which one I'm going to put the actual horse in. So <laughs> I think he's going to be near the tech room. It's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. So it's just the roofs that I've got to go on now and the doors. So hopefully all this will be totally cleared for next weekend when they come up. Seeing the stables going up is a triumphant moment. Paul decides it's time to get the family together for a party. <laughs> it's the first family thing we've had for ages, because you don't sort of, where we was trying to sell the house and everything, you don't sort of organise anything. Okay. This yeah. feels like home. <laughs> Although home is still just a caravan on a building site where she visits at weekends, and even though she's still working 12 hour night shifts in a factory, Cambridgeshire seems to be just the tonic she needs. Friday, I think, yeah, we're going home. And even though it's in the caravan, it's just so relaxing as soon as you get there. It's just like a holiday, a permanent holiday. <laughs> It's just a nice way of um, all the family turn up, a bite of eight, and it's been a nice evening. I'm just glad nothing's caught on fire, <laughs> burned down. Paul and Tracy are discovering that building their new home and life is going to be harder than they thought. But after dreaming of it for the last ten years, they're now at last in the thick of trying to make it a reality. Paul and Tracy Fitzpatrick are taking on the challenge of turning an old agricultural building into a dream family home in Cambridgeshire. After a nine-year slog in a factory, Paul wants to give Tracy the country life she's dreamed of. But during the building work, the family are living apart. Tracy is with the kids and spends the week working and living two hours away, coming up to Cambridgeshire for the weekends. First-time house builder Paul, things aren't going too smoothly. He's overspending and falling behind schedule. There's no hope he'll meet their original deadline of Christmas. It's a cold December morning in the Cambridgeshire Fens. Paul's been building his new house for two months, and today the roof trusses are arriving, four weeks later than expected. I didn't realise how big they were. When I saw them, it was like, wow, look at the size of these. I couldn't believe the actual size of them. And it just uh, threw me them about how much extra we're creating up there and there, because they are a big old lump. The new family home is taking shape. 
It's really going to sink home to me the minute I start seeing the roof truss going in because I think the roof defines it. And uh, once that roof's up there, I think it really will then start to sink home what we're doing here. And, uh, it'll be a crowning moment when the first one goes in. This might be a crowning moment for Paul, but due to the sheer size of the roof structure, it's cost more money than he budgeted for. What was the original price for the well, roof trusses? Uh, around three and a half thousand for. And it's what, seven grand now? It's seven pounds. What? Yeah. I try and justify it in my own head because, um, you know, that's the cost. And the problem was, I should if I'd thought it was seven thousand all along, I'd not been shocked and, you know, sort of a bit dismayed about it. But. With the trusses and stables costing twice as much as they'd estimated, and with all the extra labour on site, Paul and Tracy have already spent half their budget of £150,000. And the old apple fridge is still far from being a family home. Outside, the new environmentally friendly septic tank has been lowered into place. He knows which way round it goes, doesn't he? Look, see that? It says in. Yeah. And we've got out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Hot on. They, they, they say it's clean enough to drink, but, I mean, I'd, I wouldn't touch it without boiling it, but... Within a week, the roof is felted and battened. Although they're making good progress on the house, it's already Christmas and it's miles from being finished. To add to their disappointment, Tracy's stables still aren't ready. Exhausted from her job, the unexpected delays on site and the continued separation of her family has taken its toll on Tracy. I want it done yesterday, and when it's not moving now, I want it to move. I get frustrated, and when Paul phones up, oh, this can't be done, that can't be done, you're going to have to put something else back another week, and I'm stressing out about the horses. I've had a crying fit nearly every other day this week and last week. Paul has underestimated how difficult it is project managing this build. There's still a lot to do. Worried that Tracy's stress levels are affecting her health, Paul hires yet more people to get the building finished as quickly as possible. To push things forward, he gets local builder Wayne to take over more of the organisation of the build. And what difference has it made to you, Paul, having Wayne on site now? Because, I mean, it seems like there's a lot more organisation going yeah. on there. There's a godsend. I, I remember saying to Wayne, could I, could I borrow your chippies, hire them for two days? <laughs> <laughs> that was three months later. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's gelling into place now. It's now, now everyone knows what everyone's supposed to be doing. You're trying to say you didn't know what he was doing? Yeah. <laughs> you see that book I read on how to project manage your job just wasn't true. <laughs> With the new deadline of March, Paul's pulling out all the stops to get the house finished for Tracy. But all the extra labour is putting a real strain on his budget. As much as progress is fantastic and it's moving really, really quickly, there's far more people on site than I ever thought you'd have here. That must be costing you more cash. If I said to you to start to finish, this build would take 2,000 man hours. So it doesn't matter if you have them all in in two months or have one bloke doing it for six months. It'll all equal the same amount of money in the end. Have you spent more? Uh, well, I don't, well, I would have said we're, um, we're on target, everything's fine. Um, the money's there to complete the job. How much cash has this project cost you? We've spent roughly now about, so about 80, 90,000 at the moment. Right. We have uh, more than enough to finish the job. We're not worried about money. How much have you got left? It's probably in the, in the region now of about 75, 80,000 left to play with. So you've spent about 80 to 90, yeah. and you've got about 75, 80,000 left. Yeah. Ask me at the end, I'll, I'll, I'll have some left. It's got an equal amount on each side. It doesn't take Wayne long to move the build up a gear. In the matter of a week, the old fridge doorways are being bricked up. The first fix electrics are in, and the roof is being tiled. 
But while everything is happening on the house, it's a very different story with the stables. The contractors haven't been seen for two weeks, and Tracy can't get hold of them. Up well, at the stables. Um, no one's arrived yet. Just wondering if there's turning up today because obviously the roof's got to go on. We're supposed to be moving stuff in there and we've got no protection to cover it. OK, thanks. Bye. We haven't got a roof on down there. Why happens if it rains? We're supposed to be back today with the roofing stuff. It's supposed to be finished tomorrow. With the cold winter weather closing in, Tracy decides she has no option but to bring her horses to the fens. Even though the stables aren't ready. Really angry. I just want them finished. It's like the electrician's been. We've got wires hanging around, which is dangerous for the horses. But obviously, he can't finish his job until the roofs are on. They've got all the stable doors to go on. Oh, we've got all wet. So I haven't got any light over there at all. It's all gone totally wrong. But what's worse, Paul has made a big mistake. He's paid the contractors the full £15,000 up front. I don't, you know, my head must have been off in another world because you never do that. And so I've given the check over. Of course, now they've not come back. We've got half finished stables. Um, it, they're very, very unprofessional. A week later, Paul and Tracy pay a visit to the contractors to find out what's going on. But they get a nasty surprise. He cleared out everything, so he isn't even there anymore. So they've literally done a runner and the stables won't be finished. They've got all our money and now we've got to try and find extra money to finish them. So how do you feel about that, Paul? I feel more upset for Tracy because it's, uh, it's all her dream. You know, this is part of the dream and it's been nothing but um, lies, inconvenience, deceit. It's, it's just a mess. You can't, I can't get into it. I come up here and instead of enjoying it, I'll get the umps, I'll do the horses and I'll just go back down to the caravan. It's, there's no enjoyment. As if all this is not bad enough, they find out that the planning application for their stables hasn't even been put in by their architect. Tracy's stables are turning into a never-ending nightmare. In principle, they've said from the chief planning that it wouldn't be a problem. So we're hoping that the planning shouldn't be a, shouldn't be a problem to pass. But if someone objected, then the council have to answer to those objections. And they could say, they could say, the worst case scenario, pull them down. Mm. You have not got planning approval. Paul and Tracy are really learning the hard way on this build. They've put trust in people who they feel have let them down, but they now face the real danger of losing the stables, the very heart of their new life in Cambridgeshire. After another frustrating weekend, Tracy heads back to Hertfordshire to her exhausting job in the car factory. But at least there is progress being made at the house. On site, Wayne has really taken control of the build, and the Fitzpatrick's new home is going ahead in leaps and bounds. <laughs> The roof is almost tiled, and all the windows are going in. Paul's unloading the bricks to make up their new Ingle Nook fireplace. It signifies, really, that you're getting to a certain stage of the job. You know, your, your second fixing's not far away. Isn't it? By the end of February, the internal walls are all built, and the house has been insulated. The electrics are wired up, the first floor is plastered, and the plumbing's finished for the toilets and bathrooms. And one of the old door frames is being reused in the new fireplace.
Back in Hertfordshire, things take a turn for the worse. After nine years of monotonous backbreaking work in the car factory, Tracy is suffering from burnout. Moving home is one of my stressful things, without a doubt. But doing something like we've done is added stress. Now you add the fact that she's got all them other things thrown in. It's just added up. Everyone's got a level where you must get to the point and think, <clears throat> I can't take any more. I think uh, she's now reached her level. Tracy has signed off work by her doctor, so she moves permanently to Cambridgeshire to live on site with Paul in the caravan after a narrow escape with her life. And what happened? I just wasn't concentrating and I went straight into the oncoming traffic and uh, there was just lights flashing and hooters going and cars swerving around me. I think that might have been a bit of a wake up call, really. <laughs> yeah. Well, it scared the life out of me, yeah. The doctor says it's depression, I think it's more stress or... So everything's really starting to take its toll on you? I just can't seem to concentrate or... Paul is throwing all the labour and money he can at the house to get it finished. He wants to move Tracy into their new home so she can stop worrying about the build and recuperate. But at the beginning of March, with all this extra spending, the money runs out. They've spent all of their original £150,000 budget. And Paul has to go to the bank to try to raise extra funds. They're asking for an additional £90,000. Without this money, they won't be able to finish the house. But this is no ordinary mortgage application. In the bank's eyes, this is still an agricultural building. Well, we're waiting on the remortgage, which is taking forever. Everything we've done is taking twice as long because you're, you're actually still talking about a piece of land and a barn, as far as they're concerned. It's still not passed as a house. You know, we're not on the voting register, we don't have council tax. So all these things add up to the fact that you're not actually officially a house. You know, it just seems to be taking so long. I've got enough to get another couple more weeks of people working. We've got enough to do that. Two weeks later, the bank still hasn't approved the loan. And Paul and Tracy have spent every last penny on the building. Uh, the Financial worries are the last thing Tracy needs. This is stressing me out now, the, the money side. Every single credit card has been used and put right up to the limit. We're um, using all our savings, everything, uh, waiting on the release of this money now. But in April, Paul and Tracy finally get the news they've been praying for. The money's in. Woohoo. <laughs> Yeah, but we've got the money now, so it's all done. And all the bills have been paid, everyone's been paid, all the flooring's been brought, so we're back on full steam ahead. After a series of delays and overspends, the Fitzpatrick's new home and new life are finally on the home straight. spring in the Cambridgeshire Fens. For years, Paul and Tracy Fitzpatrick have worked hard so they can trade in their suburban life in Hertfordshire for a better life in the country. They've been converting a disused apple fridge and 12 acres of orchard into a country family home. The apple trees have been removed to make way for paddocks and stables for Tracy's horses. It's May 
and I've come back to see the fruits of their labour. Tracy, Hiya. how are you? <laughs> Good to see you. Are you well? Yeah. Where's Paul? In the kitchen. <laughs> Look at this. Tracy, this is amazing. Paul and Tracy have made an extraordinary transformation to this building. They've turned the once cold, dark apple fridge into a spacious family home. Hi, Paul. How are you, mate? Hi, Paul. Well done. You did it. Yeah, we're there. You've done it. We're in. It's finished. It's fantastic. Yeah, a lot of hard work, a lot of late nights. I can't believe this is our house. <laughs> <laughs> We've done it's our house. Look at you. You're beaming, aren't you? Yeah. You're absolutely yeah. beaming. This kitchen's beautiful, isn't it? Pleased with it. Well pleased with it, yeah. Well, come on then. Let's see the rest of the house. Mm. Dining table. Looks good, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, my big dining table. Fits nice though, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. This. Yeah. Looks wonderful, it's doesn't it? It's big, but it doesn't look over big. But this is the perfect family home now, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That was the aim. Mm. Um, come away, create, create and build a completely new lifestyle. They've pulled out all the stops and gone for the best in everything, from luxury flooring to quality fixtures and fittings. It still needs one or two finishing touches, but for Tracy, it's the perfect place to relax and recuperate. It's obvious she's already benefiting from life in their new house. And this is our room. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. It really is. Is this anything like you imagined it would have been? It's, it's better. I think it looks absolutely stunning. I love this floor. Mm. Italian marble. You haven't cut any corners there, have you? <laughs> In fact, you haven't anywhere. I'm honestly, I'm gobsmacked. It's so light and so airy. It's just beautiful. We're all posh now. Yeah. Posh? This is super posh. And really? unsweet, unsweet, unsweet. Unsweet? Oh, God. Paul and Tracy have overspent on this project, but their mortgage is less than they had in Hertfordshire, and they've now got everything they ever wanted. The stables have planning permission and are being completed by local builders. Tracy can finally live the country life she's always dreamed of. And the family can all be together again. So just remind me of what your original budget was. It was 150 originally. Originally? Yeah. What did you spend? 240. 240? Yeah. Literally double nearly because this is our home and we wanted good quality stuff. We're living here for a long time. So we, we ended up going out and getting what we wanted, what we dreamt of having. It's so great to see a smile back on the face. <laughs> but Paul, you did all of this for Tracy, didn't you? I knew what her dream was. I always knew what she wanted. I wanted a house with land, uh, Tracy's is all about family, and um, <laughs> this is it. Because <laughs> it's an amazing thing, isn't it? Yeah. Tracy loves me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you proud of what you've done here? Yeah. In a million years, I never dreamed that we would actually own something like this. It just feels like we're in someone else's house. <laughs> Or a hotel yeah, or something. You expect at the end of the show, you say, right now, get out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all have dreams about the life we'd like to lead, but most of us don't dare believe they'll come true. Paul and Tracy took a big chance and went for it. And as a result, they now have something really wonderful here, more than they ever imagined. A great new home and a whole new future for them 
and their family. Next week, Jan and Glenn stake everything on their dream home in Derbyshire. But the project forces them to take huge financial risks, which will test their determination to the limit. Wow, 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 wow.